हेलो फ्यूचर डॉक्टर्स वेलकम टू दिपेनिज्म आई एम डॉक्टर दिपेन एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अ कॉन्सेप्ट विथ रेफरेंस टू रेस्पिरेशन एंड द इवेंट दैट वी आर डिस्कसिंग इज ग्लाइकोलाइसिस नो ग्लाइकोलाइसिस इज द फर्स्ट स्टेप विच इज ऑफ एरोबिक ऑल्सो एज वेल एज ऑफ एनोरोबिक रेस्पिरेशन ऑल्सो hence we call glycolysis as a common pathway now glycolysis is also known as emp pathway because it was discovered by three german scientists emden meyerhof and parnas and that is why their initials are taken and hence it is known as emp pathway now in the cell where does glycolysis actually occur then the site of glycolysis is cytoplasm hence this respiration is also known as cytoplasmic respiration so in this process of glycolysis what happens is lysis means breakdown whereas the word glyco means glucose so whatever digested carbohydrates it is absorbed into the body in the form of glucose that is assimilated into the cell then inside the cell the glucose is broken down and the breakdown of glucose occurs in a step wise manner and all the steps are enzyme mediated so if you have to define glycolysis then glycolysis is defined as a step wise process also in this step there is no oxygen which is involved hence this process is anaerobic so in spite of being anaerobic it is also occurring in aerobic as well as anaerobic but the process effectively is anaerobic and there is enzyme mediated events so this is an enzymatic activity wherein glucose is broken down finally into a compound known as pyruvic acid and there are two molecules of pyruvic acid which are generated and this entire event is occurring in the cytoplasm so let us understand the step by step reaction how does the glycolysis proceed so basically the first compound is going to be the glucose in the first step glucose is converted into glucose 6 phosphate so basically during this conversion what we observe is the glucose gets phosphorylated a phosphate group is added and that is basically added on the sixth carbon of glucose hence the iupac name is glucose 6 phosphate now which compound will donate the phosphate group so it is basically the atp which is donating its phosphate group and atp gets transformed into adp and the phosphate group is added on the sixth carbon so in the first step glucose is converted to glucose 6 phosphate in the second step glucose 6 phosphate is converted into fructose 6 phosphate as we are aware glucose and fructose are isomers of each other so this reaction is known as isomerization when the glucose is an aldose sugar and fructose is a keto sugar so these are functional group isomers of each other in the next step fructose 6 phosphate is converted into fructose 1,6 diphosphate so initially the phosphate group was present at the 6 per carbon which was formed by isomerization and now one more phosphate group is added again at the first carbon as well hence we call it as 16 diphosphate who will be the phosphate donor obviously in this step again the phosphate donor is atp which gets transformed into adp so what we observe is in steps number 1 and 3 there is utilization of atp molecule we call these events as the activation stage or the preparatory stage so during the preparatory stage ultimately glucose has been converted into fructose 16 diphosphate by utilizing one one atp molecules that is total two atp molecules in the fourth step the fructose 16 diphosphate compound is broken down into two molecules one of them is known as dhap which is known as dihydroxyacetone phosphate 
from the name itself it is obvious it is a ketone and that ketone is acetone dihydroxyacetone phosphate and the other compound which is formed that is known as 3 pgal which is known as phosphoglyceraldehyde so from the name itself it is obvious that this is an aldehyde both of them are trio sugars trios meaning three carbon containing and in this compound as well the phosphate group is present on the third carbon a point to be noted over here is this fourth step wherein the fructose 16 diphosphate is splitting this step is known as cleavage so cleavage means splitting into two different compounds also the acetone and this aldehyde they are isomers of each other so a very important point which has to be understood is that the dihydroxyacetone phosphate does not proceed further in the glycolysis in fact it gets converted into 3 phosphoglyceraldehyde so ultimately in the next step what we get is two molecules of 3 phosphoglyceraldehyde because the dihydroxyacetone phosphate has isomerized into 3 phosphoglyceraldehyde in the next step 3 phosphoglyceraldehyde gets converted into 1 3 diphosphoglyceric acid in this step again a phosphate group is added but in this step number 6 the phosphate donor is not atp in fact it is inorganic phosphate or phosphoric acid which is the phosphate donor also in step number 6 there is oxidation reaction occurring okay now we have already mentioned that this event is an anaerobic event so this entire process is anaerobic that means there is no molecular oxygen involved but if we are mentioning here oxidation is occurring then oxidation can mean either gain of oxygen or loss of hydrogen so basically what we are pointing out is here there will be loss of hydrogen occurring from 3 phosphoglyceraldehyde and because of oxidation and phosphorylation 1,3 diphosphoglyceric acid is formed now the hydrogen which is lost from 3 phosphoglyceraldehyde that is taken up by a coenzyme NAD NAD is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide which is a hydrogen acceptor which leads to the formation of NADH2 or we can say NADH plus a proton the protons are generated because of a particular process which is known as chemiosmosis now so in step number six NADH2 molecules are generated since there are two molecules there will be two NADH2 molecules which are generated in the next step 1,3 diphosphoglyceric acid is converted into 3 phosphoglyceric acid so what has happened is from 1,3 diphospho it is converted into 3 phospho that is one phosphate group is removed from this substrate the phosphate group which is removed that is taken up by ADP and that leads to the formation of ATP but as you mentioned there are two molecules hence in step number 7 two ATP molecules are generated in the next step 3 phosphoglyceric acid is converted to 2 phosphoglyceric acid in this event what is happening is the phosphate group is shifting from third carbon to the second carbon so this step is also known as shifting of phosphate in the ninth step 2 phosphoglyceric acid is converted into PEPA which is called as phosphoenol pyruvic acid and in this event there is a loss of water molecule so basically 2 pga is converted into pepa by dehydration in the last step phosphoenol pyruvic acid is converted into pyruvic acid again in this step the phosphate group is removed so that phosphate group is taken up by adp that leads to the formation of atp since there are two molecules here also two ATP molecules are generated so what we understand is in step number 7 and step number 10 two each ATP molecules are generated so total ATP formed is 4 ATP whereas in step number 1 and 3 1 1 ATP molecule is used so total ATP used is 2 ATP hence the net gain of ATP is 2 ATP so this is the net gain plus in the overall reaction we also form 2 NADH2 molecules as well which will be 
involving in the process of ets electron transport system if aerobic respiration is occurring but in case if anaerobic respiration is occurring nadh2 participates in the reduction reaction of the organic substrate so these are the different compounds and the processes now let us mention the carbon atoms as well the glucose and fructose are hexo sugars hence they all will contain six carbon atoms as fructose 16 diphosphate undergoes cleavage all the molecules that are formed they are all three carbon containing so at the end of glycolysis the final product which is formed is pyruvic acid which is three carbon containing and since there are two molecules 2 into 3 six carbon so the reaction is balanced in this event as well now let us understand what are the different enzymes that are used for each step since we mentioned that it is an enzymatic activity in the first step glucose which is phosphorylated into glucose 6 phosphate during this step since it is an hexo sugar the enzyme is known as hexokinase kinase because of the atp utilization and hexo because it is an hexo sugar in the next step glucose 6 phosphate is isomerized to fructose 6 phosphate so this is an isomerization reaction hence the enzyme is known as phospho gluco isomerase since it is an isomerization reaction in step number 3 fructose 6 phosphate is converted to fructose 16 diphosphate again here atp is involved so the enzyme name ends with kinase and it is known as phospho fructo kinase in the next step where cleavage occurs into dihydroxyacetone phosphate and 3 phosphoglyceraldehyde the enzyme is known as aldolase in the next step where dhap is converted into 3 pgel and this is again an isomerization reaction plus the carbohydrates contains 3 carbon atoms that is they are triose sugar the enzyme is known as phospho triose isomerase so again this enzyme is called as isomerase because of the isomerization reaction in step number 6 there is oxidation of 3 phosphoglyceraldehyde occurring and in the oxidation mainly what is occurring is loss of hydrogen hence the enzyme is also known as dehydrogenase because of the dehydrogenation reaction so the enzyme is known as phosphoglyceraldehyde dehydrogenase in the seventh step we generate atp molecule here again atp is involved hence the enzyme ends with kinase name and diphosphoglyceric acid is converted to 3 phosphoglyceric acid the enzyme is known as phospho glycero kinase in the next step 3 phospho is converted to 2 phosphoglyceric acid since there is shifting of phosphate the enzyme is known as phospho glycero mutase since the shifting of phosphate is also known as a type of mutation reaction in the next step 2 phosphoglyceric acid is converted to phosphoenol pyruvic acid by dehydration and the enzyme is known as enolase in step number 10 phosphoenol pyruvic acid is converted to pyruvic acid and again here atp is participating hence the enzyme name will contain kinase and the enzyme is known as pyruvate kinase so these are the 10 different enzymes for 10 reactions of glycolysis let us summarize the reactions the first reaction is phosphorylation second is isomerization step 3 again phosphorylation step 4 is very important which is known as cleavage step number 5 is again isomerization step number 6 is oxidation and phosphorylation step number 7 we call it as atp generation step number 8 is shifting of phosphate from third carbon to the second carbon step number 9 is dehydration and step number 10 
is ATP generation. So by the end of glycolysis, it results in formation of two molecules of pyruvic acid. Now, depending on whether it is aerobic or anaerobic respiration, there will be different fates of pyruvic acid. So this is overall discussion about glycolysis. Stay tuned for my further videos.